I bought you another patrol. Patrol 1 and patrol 2. Fast and you shall receive. Power windows and aircon. It's got all the luxuries you could want. Living the dream, babes. Stay the art. Stay the art pioneer head unit. <laughs> now when you wake up in the morning, you'll be like, do I want to drive this patrol or do I want to drive that patrol? Choices, choices. You're like a full-blown bogan patrol driver now. You made me a bogan though. You made me this way. When we were driving down the highway a couple weekends ago, we passed the heap of patrols and Demi was like, what's that one there? And I was like, oh, that's a GQ patrol. And then she was like, I want one of them. They look cool. So I bought you one. <laughs> Got a battery, that's good. You know, this is the world famous, iconic 4.2 litre diesel patrol engine. Non-turbo version though, so a little bit lacking on the power front. Not if I'm driving it. Go drop it, yeah. Proudly supported by our back equipment. Tread, Superior Engineering, and in part by. I'm not exactly sure what's happened, but we have ended up with a third four wheel drive. It is a 1995 GQ Nissan Patrol TD42, also known as a kettle because they are famous for overheating. Will be when I'm in here. The GQ is the model that came before the GU, so I bought the GU first, and now I've got the GQ, which is the even older model. So I believe they made these up until 1998. It is a solid axle four wheel drive front and rear, and it is coil sprung front and rear, which are basically the two ultimate starting points for building a four wheel drive. Now I can't really give a solid story or exact one reason of why we needed another four wheel drive or why we bought another four wheel drive, but I can try and piece together a few excuses, I guess, to justify it. Um, what are the excuses again? Forget buy it and then try and think of reasons why later yeah <laughs> so demi got into a car crash someone crashed into her car well that's her story anyway oh, shut I, up. I wasn't there for that <laughs> so that's uh maybe to be debated it wasn't a major crash everyone was fine but the front end was pretty well smashed up so we were down a vehicle another reason was i recently had an appointment with my tax person he said well it's coming up the end of financial year basically the more money you spend on your business obviously the less money you're going to have to pay come tax time so i did purchase this for nine thousand dollars but it did take uh, a few grand off my tax bill the third excuse i guess we can come up with is that i do this full time build and drive four wheel drives on the youtube channel so I just try and put my money back into the YouTube channel content, variety, and another four wheel drive to build and drive out on the tracks and hope, hopefully be inter interesting for the viewers. The first dilemma we have though, is that Demi can only drive an automatic vehicle. And now we've ended up with three vehicles and two of them are manuals. <laughs> she can still only drive the GU, which is automatic, but we're gonna learn, aren't we? We're gonna do some manual teaching lessons. So that way, hopefully Demi can drive this one too. Now you might be thinking, if you want variety and content for the channel, why the hell did you get another patrol? You just, <laughs> you just bought a patrol six months ago. Well, it was a little bit of a, I saw it, I thought I'll buy it and then think about it later. But the way I see it is, this is a 4.2 diesel. So it's a diesel over petrol, it's a manual. It's the old GQ version. I'm gonna modify it and build it quite differently. And I really love the GU patrol. So I guess I sort of got a little bit addicted to patrols now. I actually had no plans at all to buy another four wheel drive. And then it just popped up for sale on Instagram off the same guy I actually bought the GU off. And I made a joke to them. I was like, oh, maybe we could buy another patrol. He's selling another one. And then literally 24 hours later, I owned it. So, like I sent it to a couple of mates, they're like, yeah, get it, get it, get it. And the next day I was driving down, having a look at it. I went down there with Pat, my mechanic, so he went right over it with me. There's a few bits and pieces there we're gonna have to fix up, but I didn't want like some full restoration vehicle 
few bits to fix up and then generally it's just going to be into modifying it and driving it. The chassis is really good, not too much rust on that other than just bits of surface rust which can be easily fixed up. And same with the drive line with, with the diffs and that, you know, 30 year old vehicle always going to have that little bit of surface rust. Engine has 680,000 Ks on it, <laughs> roughly that, approximately 687 or something, which did put me off a little bit at first but Speaking to my mechanic and others that own these GQs, 4.2 litre diesel, providing the engine in good condition, which it seems to be, then you know you can get much longer life out of them, you know, up to 2 million Ks and things like that. So we had a good look through the engine, test drove it. Uh, the engine all seems to be good condition, running properly. The main concern was the roof has been fixed up. Looks like it's had a little bit of uh, bog as it put through it and it's been repainted because the GQs are known for getting that rust along the roof rails because the water catches and sits in there. It looks like I've fixed it up and there's already a little bit of rust coming back. So that is a potential down the track future job. It's not the end of the world. And I've also got a bit of a different plan of this that's kind of going to half solve that problem anyway, which I'll get to in a minute. Now, if we take a look inside, you do have to remember that this is a 30 year old vehicle. So you're not going to have the modern luxuries of a vehicle today, but Look, it's, it's not too bad. It's not too bad inside. It's got power windows, which is good. Air conditioning, which is good. And it doesn't have cruise control. That is one thing, though. And look, it's not immaculate. There's a few scuffs, scratches, things going on here and there, inside and out. But overall, condition's not too bad. And I reckon once we, you know, add some seat covers, add a stereo, a few bits and pieces, it'll be a whole lot nicer in here. Here is the engine, the big TD42 diesel. It is a NA version, which I don't even know what that stands for, but means non-turbo. So a non-turbo 4.2 litre diesel. And for coming up 700,000 Ks on a 30 year old vehicle, this is all in quite good condition. It all seems to be the original cooling system, which is good news, means it hasn't been overheating and had those issues on it. No oil leaks anywhere that we can note through the engine bay or through the drive line at all. And yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. It's going to be another good learning experience for me because I don't know too much about them. Now, the future plans with it. Well, we're still trying to work that out. I'm not in any major rush to just jump in and start modifying this thing every week. Got quite a few things going on, but this will be another good uh, side project. And obviously, it'll start to make more appearances, I guess, as time goes on when we work out what we want to do with it. But given I've already got a seven-seat GU, I thought it would be cool to chop this one, which would be something different and some good content. I thought that'd be pretty cool to have a chopped GQ ute. The main question we've been discussing since we bought it a couple of weeks ago now is whether we dual cab chop it so that it can, you know, still obviously fit multiple people in it and maybe do some family trips on it. Obviously, we're not going to fit everyone in it, but say myself, Demi and Zef could go away on a trip, dual cab chop. The problem with that is you can only fit a very short tray on the back unless you go into chassis extending and that, which I don't want to do because it's going to take away from the original, you know, capabilities and that of the vehicle. And with a dual cab chopper, these, a lot of the tray and canopy would end up overhanging the rear axle. So it'd be a cool vehicle, but you're just going to lose a lot of capabilities of it. It's sort of going to end up maybe a bit of a mixed vehicle, but I guess that'd be okay. That's one option. The other option is to space cab chop it, and this is probably the one I'm more leaning to at the moment, meaning it would just be a two-seater car, and then you'd have that space cab section behind the two seats where you'd be able to store some stuff, and then you'd be able to put a slightly bigger tray on it. So, you know, maybe a 1 to 1.2 or 1.2 to 1.4 meter tray that would sort of come back and then end not too far behind those rear tires. That way it's not, you haven't got heaps of weight hanging over at the back. And that would basically mean to be much more capable then. So we could build this as, you know, like a space cab, super capable rig that could then go do like six stage and Carnage Creek at Coffs and, you know, really take on some tough tracks, put some good bar work on the front, then it's going to be super capable and ready. I'd probably engineer it for 35s and then maybe say like have a set of 37s, take it there on a trailer or something like that. And with space cab chopping it, I sort of think that'd make more sense because I've already got the dual cab 
nav as a tourer i got the gu family wagon seven seats that's the one we're going to be towing with we've got it we've got a new camper trailer i don't know if you've seen that yet or not depending on when this comes out but we did get a camper trailer so we're going to be doing some camper trailer trips in the gu some harder tracks as well and then you know i feel like rather than dual cab chop this too maybe space cab chop this as a bit of a side project and then obviously we'll take it on some trips along the way and you know test it out put it to use see how it goes just make the most of it and we could probably take both patrols on some trips too demi could drive the g her her mine yours mine yours g you and i can drive mine. is this yours too <laughs> yours so we'll take both your patrols on the trip so that's probably the main thing we're looking at doing, chopping it. I'll try and mix it up with the mods as much as I can. So it's different to the GU we just built as much as possible. So you're not sort of watching the same things go on another patrol. The other thing is I'll probably will turbo it at some point. And that'll just give me that bit more power because once you put the 35s on it, from what I've heard, they do start to struggle quite a bit. First few things are taking it to the mechanics next week, S&P, we'll go through a run through of the whole thing, you know, give it a full serv service once over, have a look at the cooling system. That's the main first thing you wanna get on top of on these. I've already got a quick as fan, I believe it was. I bought one of them online for four or 500 bucks or something. So we'll whack that fan on, we'll check the radiator, we'll give it a full coolant flush, check all the piping, hoses, all that. If you got any other tips of what you recommend for getting the cooling systems working good on these, new thermostat, all that stuff. These are really good engines, other than the kettle and overheating issue. So get on top of that and you're pretty good. Cool, it's actually really nice to drive for a 30 year old vehicle. Look, it does sound a bit like a tractor. <laughs> it's got that tractor diesel noise. But uh, yeah, other than that, like, you know, changing gears, the clutch, the smoothness of it, still got a decent amount of power at the moment as is, till I put big tires on it. It's getting a little bit late, that sun's gone down. So I'm gonna finish this, wrap this up here. And then what I think we'll do for the next part of this video tomorrow, might go for a drive and give Demi a go of trying to drive. A manual car and see how we go there maybe take it just for a little test out of the bush do a little hill climb or something in it and see how it performs back the next day and we bought the big gq bus out of the bush for its first drive so first bush drive and then he's going to have a little go at trying to drive this manual this thing is uh definitely sounds like a tractor once you get it out of the bush give it, give it a little rev and let's listen to the big 4.2 <laughs> the one on the right just like yeah wow. This is going to be a fun day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen to it. And then there's that rattle. Um, I better see if I can lock these hubs in. Actually, I probably should have really... Oh no, they're quite easy. <laughs> I thought I might have needed a tool for them if they're a bit seized up. But... Safety. Now I don't actually know how to teach many at all, so... Yeah. I'll probably do it all wrong here as a bike rider over there. Don't run them over. <laughs> have you ever actually like did you used to drive manual no, no no so you've never done manual before. i've done manual on the highway but i didn't change the gears or anything how does that happen did you just jump over seats at 110 no because like, how did you get it started um forget so remember when you got a break you got to put the clutch in to i'm so nervous i'll probably explain all this wrong so like don't get too triggered about uh technical so there'll be someone that'll technically detail how I explained everything wrong. We've already gone through a little bit of home. So you're going to put your clutch in now to the left, left hand side. one. Yeah. So remember left hand. Oh, so far away. Yeah. So left hand foot is clutch and right hand foot is accelerator and brake. So your left foot's only for the clutch. Your right hand foot does the other two. So you clutch in and bring it over into first and then take your handbrake off. <laughs> So we are on a little bit of a downhill. The good thing about this car is like the clutch is really good and the engine compression or whatever you call it in the fact you can nearly just work the clutch without having to be too sensitive with the throttle in the big tractor. So yeah, bring your foot out, take your foot off the brake. That literally just looks like <laughs> Yeah, don't worry. My foot's not on the brake. Okay, so take so bring your foot slowly out of the clutch and just let it idle along. And wait till it gets to that grab point where you start to feel it and then work with it. What do you mean? Once you start to feel it, start to surge. Once it gets to that grab point on the clutch. What do I do? What do I do? No, just keep going. So <laughs> once the clutch comes out, take your foot all the way off and then just drive it. 
Got normal. Yeah, drive along normal. And we'll just go along in first for a bit. So we might change gears. So just bring your foot out of the clutch, get the car going. Yeah. Scared. Till you get to that grab point. Yeah, there it is. And then work with it. Yeah, that's it. Now, don't touch anything. Don't touch anything, just drive. Now, adjust the accelerator, okay? So, forget the brake and the clutch, just give it a little bit of throttle as you'd normally drive a car. Yeah, that's it. And then you're driving. Yeah, and then just hold it like that for, for like 30 seconds so you're not in panic mode. I am though. And the annoying thing about this car is the rev is the rev odometer thing is broken, so we can't really go off changing gears when it gets to a certain rev, which is kind of annoying. <laughs> we have to get that fixed. This is literally just like driving a Ratley old tractor. Yeah. <laughs> a lawnmower. Yeah. Taking our lawnmower for a drive out the bush. Ooh. Oh, look, the rev things decide to start working. Oh, so that's normally when you want to change doing this sort of stuff, around the 2000 revs. What do I do? Well, do you want to have a go at changing up to second? I guess. You're going to bring your foot off the accelerator, yeah. and then you're going to push the clutch in, yeah. and then bring it down into second. And then bring your foot back off the accelerator, but don't do it on an uphill because that's like just going to make your life harder for the beginning. Wait to run a bit of a downhill, then the car will maintain its speed. Because if you try and do it on an uphill, you have to do it all very quick, which is going to be make it difficult. Okay, here you go. Have a go at going up a second. So you're going to bring your foot off the accelerator, and then whack the clutch in, and then down to second. Yeah, and now bring your foot back off the accelerator before you lose too much speed. Yep. Now accelerate again. Yeah. Oh, I did it. Boys. <laughs> yeah. So you just have to get like, that's that's basically the combination that you're doing. You just have to get used to doing it like quickly and smoothly. That's all it is. We're gonna have a little crack at getting up this back fire trail up to Jolly Nose. So now we've got to put in four wheel drive, which should be the same as the GU, so you should know how. Oh, so shit. put it into neutral, neutral, and then My there you neutral. go, you've got to, yeah, you're neutral here. Yeah. Which I did for you. You've got a four wheel drive sign come up there now on your dash. Yeah, it's high. So now you go down and push down, fall low. Yeah. You'll get more used to that grab point. You know, sort of bring it right to that grab point and go and pick. So I, yeah, seeing like that's first gear low now. It's like crawling it. So now you're going to go foot in the clutch. Yep, down to second. Yep, and foot back off the clutch. Yep. And now we're professional. <laughs> A bit bumpy, eh? Hey? <laughs> and now you're just forward driving as you normally would, like a maniac. Just remember, you don't have 35s, <laughs> twin lockers, and three inch lifts. Just take it easy. Oh, Jesus Christ, Zeph, you're all back. Zeph loves this sort of stuff. <laughs> He's like, This is my life. See, so it's not even that bad. Like doing the manual driving. Well, it's your first time, like 10 minutes doing it. It's already like you're already obviously getting a bit of a hang of it. Imagine doing it for a few hours. Well, I think doing it on the road is completely different. Well, not completely it's the same. It's just obviously you got cars going on around you. That's how I crash. So I better get insurance for this thing quick. <laughs> nice little fun track this for a bit of a first time driving the manual and for a first time driving a four wheel drive. It's just a little bit of steepness, a few holes and bumpy bits there to navigate your way through. So there's a bit of rut to you. So see what line you pick and just have to remember to keep that bit of throttle or wheel stall. Yeah, that's the line, yep. Yeah, and then just hold it at that. Yep, yeah, that's it. Before we drive it out, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's the thing you have to remember with a manual now, like you can't just come to a stop on a hill climb because then you got to clutch and do your gears so you get that. Yeah. You got to keep that bit of momentum, keep it moving. Made up the top here. Pretty awesome lookout from the top of Jolly Nose, but Zeph's asleep, so we don't want to risk stopping and looking around and then him wake up and scream the car. <laughs> so we'll just uh, poke our way back down this track now. It's a fun little drive up here. So the good thing about this, a manual and a diesel, is you can not brake like going down this hill and the car will just go super duper slow, yeah. like a tractor. Like if you say no acceleration now, See how it's going really slow, yeah. and whereas the other patrol, the auto, it's a break a bit. it'd be like Bye. going faster. Yeah.
Once you get through this bump here, you can bring it back up to second. Yeah. No, that wasn't, yeah, that wasn't too bad. I'm gonna have to wash it before next week, otherwise Pat and Nick will murder me. <laughs> Nick told me if I bring another dirty car, he's charging me a hundred dollar cleaning fee. <laughs> Is that all? Take my car to it. <laughs> yeah, you're liking this. Oh. Yeah. yeah, is it fun? Yeah. <laughs> so you begin more used to that, like, feel of that clutch, like where it activates. Yeah. And then whack it up a second, clutch in, bring it down, clutch back out. <laughs> <laughs> I got confused. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, don't do anything, but just listen, see how the engines obviously like get noisier. Yeah. Yeah, so that's where, like, once you get noisier, they probably want to bring it up the third now. face is like, Lord help me. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is mum doing? This is your life now. <laughs> now some real fun. Zephy, you can have some fun. that for you driving the manual good are you loving it yeah you're already a professional yeah just need to make it look pretty just need the massive some 40 inch tires six inch lift they'll be ready ready paint for it, you paint it dusty pink <laughs> good to go guys yep all right we'll finish this video up there that was awesome fun out the bush this afternoon i'm glad we took it out there and gave a little spin on some of those tracks all very basic stuff but yeah it was just good to get out for the bush out the bush for the first time and get it doing what it does best made me feel better about buying it because after i bought it i was a bit anxious <laughs> spending money on another car like do i really need another car but yes the answer is yes you always need another another four-wheel drive or car if the opportunity arises and demi went really well there even with just that hour of practicing this afternoon she already had the hang of it and she drove back home from the bush too back here which was Good, so I reckon a few more practices, then she'll be able to drive that. So yes, we are keeping all three four-wheel drives. Yes, I do need four, three four-wheel drives. Don't ask why, I just do. <laughs> but no, it's just really good content uh, for me and the channel and variety. And, and then just a few points to finish up with. Why didn't I get a Toyota? Why did I get another Nissan? That's like four Nissans I've owned in a row now. I do like to make fun of Toyotas and give a little uh, bit back to all those hardcore Toyota fans that just constantly tell me how I should have bought a Cruiser and how much better they are. I don't actually think they're better. I don't think they're worse. I just think a four-wheel drive is a four-wheel drive. They all have issues. They all have their good points. Um, but yeah, don't have anything against Toyotas. It's just it's just what popped up. It just popped up and I was like, yep, well, <laughs> I'll get that one. And uh, yeah, I'm really loving the Patrol 2s. Maybe a Toyota next time. Maybe. We'll see. I'm getting so much enjoyment out of getting these four wheel drives, modifying and building them, testing them out on the tracks, doing trips in it, like it's what I love doing. So that's where I wanna in invest, spend my money on doing that. And having these build videos is good for me as well. We have four kids at home now, so it can be hard for me to just regularly get away. Like that's the biggest problem I'm having at the moment is just time, time to get away. Here's Demi coming home behind me now in the GU. So that's her daily driver at the moment. <laughs> daily driver at the moment. And a family car, so that's another thing people are getting upset about. Oh, didn't you buy that to be a family car? We never see all the family in it. Um, we will be soon, so new camper trailer over there, which will be an upcoming video. We're going to do some towing trips with that car with everyone. But we do a lot of stuff, and I just don't film everything in my life. So we've been out in it a few times now, local trips and that. Uh, Zeph's only young, a couple years old. So once he's a bit older and the timing's all right, then, yeah, we'll start doing the trips in it with the whole family. I've also worked out I seem to like 
old vehicles at the moment. Like I'm going to keep the nav as the new vehicle and I'll probably replace that with a new vehicle at some point in time. But yeah, I don't know, something I like about the older vehicles and the simplicity of them that I'm enjoying getting them and building them up. All right, I'll finish the video there and I'll see everyone in the next one. Boy. Ultimate mods wet. Oh. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. All right, we'll finish that video. And then just a couple points to make note of owning 